Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Catholic Mass in the Fireside Chapel at St. Henry Catholic Church, Gresham, Oregon. My name is Father Charles Zock, and I'll be joined by our reader Don and our musicians, Miss L and Barb. Today we have an extra choir member to join Michelle and Barb. It's Riley, who is celebrating his first birthday today and will be baptized today. Is that okay with you, Riley? <laughs> and his family from the Philippines will be watching by live stream, so I ask you all to behave. <laughs> we gather in the Lord's name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. <laughs> Let us now begin and call upon the Lord, for you are my God. the Eucharist. And so we cry out, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Thank you. 
upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while you may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, 
Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ, and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life to be with Christ, for that day is far better. Yet I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them to his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you too go into my vineyard and I will give you what is just. So then, then he went off. And he went again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others still standing around and said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Children, it's storytelling time. I decided that the first reading.
reading from Isaiah is quite important, as is the gospel. So I've attached one story to each of those readings. Isaiah writes in God's voice, my thoughts, they're not your thoughts. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. It's not time to sing yet, Riley. <laughs> God's ways are not our ways. So I thought a lot about that and then considered a story from my own family. God always makes good for those who put their faith and trust in his ways. So one day I was out as a junior in high school with a sigh. Some of you might remember what a sigh looks like. We were on a hillside which the moor couldn't reach. And Dad picked me to go out in the heat of the day with a sigh and work on cutting broom down an awkward hillside. It eventually took us about four hours. Did I tell you it was hot? It was in July. I couldn't keep up with Dad, and so I paused and leaned on my side. And one way you can always get Dad to pause is if you ask a question, because he was always the best teacher. So the question was a lead question. How did you and Mom meet? He stopped. He was dripping wet and he leaned on his side. I guess he thought, okay, it's time to not be so private anymore. He said he first met this 17-year-old girl at a dance. He said she was the most beautiful woman I ever saw. Didn't take long, six months later, I asked Kurt to marry me. Kurt began to cry. Dad first told me the background of Mom's life, which I and none of the family knew. She was born October 17, 1922. An only child, and her mother died giving birth to her. A week later, my grandfather, Henry, as well, took his life full of grief. My mother was a preemie, as one of my aunts told me, about that long. But the maternal grandmother, my great-grandparents, Gunther, she knew what to do. Put her in a little towel and placed her in a bread pan next to the wood stove. There were no doctors or nurses out in this very rural country of Bloomfield, Nebraska. When her grandparents could no longer care for her, she went with very loving aunts, one year after the other, until she reached adulthood then, which is graduating from eighth grade. She moved to the city, and learned how to pluck chickens for 15 cents an hour by hand. And then Dad asked her to marry her, and she started to cry. That upset Dad, he said. Why are you sobbing? I don't want to hurt you. And through the sobbing, she just says, I didn't think anyone could ever love me. That really struck me. Henry and Gertrude had 12 children. 12 children before she was 36. What a homemaker. What a caregiver. You can imagine she had to stay home to work. <laughs> God's ways are not our ways. What began as a very mournful first week of her life, there
there was a plan. Working with faith, understanding God's will. That's why we take Isaiah to heart. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. Even though sometimes we say, wouldn't it make more sense, Lord, if you just do what I'm asking? And then we come to the gospel. The landowner expresses what a gracious and generous and kind God is. Paid the just wage to anyone, no matter what time of day you put in your work. The story goes back to the late 1930s. Some of you might remember the mobster era, especially in New York. One name that you came across if you watched the untouchables was Dutch Schultz. Dutch Schultz was a crime lord, a racketeer, a heartless racketeer. He was charged by Tom Dewey, the prosecutor of Newark, New Jersey. They became mortal enemies. Even though he got off, Dutch Schultz swore he was going to take Tom Dewey's life. The other crime commission lords got together and said, no, no, that would be too dangerous. Then the police would come down on us even more. You leave him alone. They couldn't convince Dutch Schultz. And so he tried to befriend Lucky Luciano, an Italian Catholic, to get off his case he knew the assassination might be imminent for himself. He said, I'm considering becoming Catholic. That didn't change the mobster commission. So one night in a restaurant in Newark, New Jersey, he and his henchmen were having dinner and they were shot to death. While he was bleeding and in and out of consciousness, they rushed him to the hospital. And what do you suppose Dutch Schultz asked for? Send for a Catholic priest. The Catholic priest came, baptized him. He said, yes, I want to be baptized, and gave him the last rites. And a few hours later, he died. He was given a Christian service and was buried in Gate of Heaven Catholic Cemetery in Hawthorne, New York. A hue and cry went up among some of the Catholic community. How dare you allow such an evil person to be receiving the grace of God and be buried with full Christian honors. The last will be first, and the first will be last. Sometimes we think that way. So it's important that we understand the generosity, the ever searching us out by God, looking even for the latecomers. That can be us at times. Sinner or saint, all are welcome. So we praise God for his mercy, which knows no bounds. And now today I'm going to share a little bit of wisdom, theology, from my mother. She was always very quiet, but when she spoke, wow, did she speak having 12 children, and because she grew up at a time when infant mortality was so high, especially in the rural area, when the baby is born, you go right to church. But 
my mother added, because a baptized baby is a better baby. That's pretty deep theology. And she thought that because she knew the baby was going to be given another parent, God the Father, was going to be given a brother by the name of Jesus Christ and would become a temple of the Holy Spirit for the rest of their lives. To image, to speak, and model the very face of God. Always remember, just when we think we know better than God, God reminds us, your ways are not always my ways. My ways are higher than yours. Just learn to understand what Jesus meant when we said, I want you to learn this prayer and say it often. Thy will be done. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I now invite Riley, his parents and godparents, to come forward. Ryan and Maxine, and Kyle, the godparent. And if everyone will stand, we're going to recite with them our baptismal vows where we renounce sin and we profess our faith. For your part, you too must strive to bring one another up in the faith so that divine life may be preserved from the contagion of sin and may grow in us and especially now in Riley. Mindful of your own baptism, then, everyone, renounce sin and profess faith in Christ Jesus, the faith of the church in which this child is baptized. So please all respond resoundingly with this family, I do, to the following questions. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the whole church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So I ask parents and godparents, is it your will that Riley should receive baptism in the faith of the church, which we have all professed with you? It's time for a bath. Time for a bath. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. with your family and friends to help you by word and example, 
bring it unstained into eternal life. Receive the light of Christ. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly so that your child, enlightened by Christ, may walk always as a child of the light and persevering in the faith, may run to meet the Lord when he comes with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. And now may the Lord, who made the deaf to hear and the mute to speak, Grant that you may soon receive the word of God and be able to speak the word of God with your lips. To the glory and praise of God the Father. Amen. Amen. And now if you could raise Riley High for us to acknowledge his reception. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. This will become for us the bread of life. Bless you. Through this mystery of water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled, up, humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. This will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sin. Sisters and brothers, we pray together that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you. In joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the heights. Please be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that, that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander and Peter, our bishops, with all the clergy and your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Henry and Cunegunda, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. 
trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us share a sign of peace.
Let us pray. Gracious to me, raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in history and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just one reminder, we are registering for all of our faith formation, all the way from K through 12, including adults for RCIA, Quinceañera, and Bible study. Many of you would have gotten something in the mail, or you can go online, and you can also check in the bulletin. We would like to have a drive-by drop-off at the Masses on the 26th and 27th, Saturday and Sunday, or you can drop it off at the church. For all the registration and information is all online or by mail. And now I invite the parents to come right up in front of the altar with your child. There's more, Riley. It won't take long. <laughs> we first of all bless the mother of this child. For through his son, born of the Virgin Mary, there is joy brought to Christian mothers. May he graciously bless the mother of this child, so that as she now gives thanks for the gift of her child, she may always remain united with him in thanksgiving in Christ Jesus our Lord. And if you can handle your bundle of joy, Riley, over to Papa, who will bless now the Father. May the Lord God Almighty, the giver of both heaven on heaven and earth, bless the father of this child so that together with his wife, they may be by word and example proof of first witnesses of faith for their child in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Now you can join in with the choir for the final song, Riley. <laughs> Oh, we have. 